about chapter 10. So 10 is our reason to proof. 10 one, basic constructions. No one has any questions? I find that hard to believe. I mean, it is the basics, I guess. What about 10.2, dealing with patterns and inductive reasoning? When you see a pattern, you can normally induce. A lot of people say deductive reasoning, but there's a difference between inductive and deductive. Questions on that? 10.3, conditional statements. If this, then that. If it rains, then we will play inside. If it is a nice day, then I will go disc golf. These conditional statements. How great did that 35 are stuck in the head? 10 4, by conditionals. <clears throat> 10 5, deductive reasoning. Now I feel like you guys are playing a trick on me. 10.6, reasoning through algebra and geometry. I'm anticipating 10.7, proving angles congruent. Man, I thought you said you wanted to review this. Yeah, there is something I think on 10.7. But... You can just hear the tumbleweeds. Yeah, Like, so not the two column proofs? Like this? Uh, yeah. So this is essentially a two column proof just written out in paragraph form. And that like, wait, what? It's essentially two column, but it's not. So let me drop this over into our smart presentation and let's play with some highlighters and see what we can figure out. Say from 10.7. So our givens are that angle 1 and 2 are complementary, and angles 2 and 3 are complementary. So what does it mean for two angles to be complementary? They make 180 together. Or they form like a straight line. You're steamrolling. Careful. Back yourself up. Jacob? Oh, two they add up to 90 degrees. 90. The yeah. corny way that I try to get people to remember this. To compliment someone is the That's right thing to do. You take supplements to get bigger. So, complementary, 90 degree angles. So, so what this is really telling me, if I rewrite this, if I rewrite my given statements, is angle 1, and that means like the size of the angle, plus angle 2 is 90 degrees. And angle 2 plus angle 3, now I'm actually going to do myself a favor here. <coughs> I'm going to flip that around because addition is commutative. So I can actually turn my addition around and say angle 3 plus angle 2 is equal to 90. Now I notice something here. At least I hope I notice something. I have angle 2 in both of these statements. Where are my colors? Come on. The other thing I know is angle 1 is 45. So if angle 1 is 45, angle 1 and angle 2 add up to 90, then this tells me, like, forget about your paragraph first. Use your brain to figure out everything that you can. If this is 45, and its complement is angle 2, what would angle 2 measure? 45, right? Because 45 and 45 <coughs> add up to 90. Now, if I know that angle 2 is now 45, and its complement is angle 3, what's angle 3? 45. 45. It's all 45. So they're all 45 degree angles. So we know that. This is essentially saying the given statements, blank and blank, are complementary, and angle 2 and angle 3. Well, since they already cover angle 2 and angle 3, this is angle 1 
at angle 2. Because it's given. We know this. Not we infer, not we deduce. We know it, we're told it. Because these facts are given, then by the something, angle 2 plus angle 3 equal 90. Now, if they're now laying out that angle 2 and angle 3 equal 90, where do you think they got the idea that angle 2 and angle 3 equal 90? What do two angles be 90 degrees? What is that? Jacob? The definition of complementary angles. Yeah. So right here, we have just definition of complements or complementary angles. Because what it's telling me is these two angles add up to 90. That's defining what it means to be complementary. Then given that BD, oh, I forgot the other given. BD bisects ABC. This is that, you don't even need that given, but they're being really nice to you. Since BD bisects, what does bisect mean? Yeah, bi means two, sect means half, so we're going to bisect things. We have two equal sized angles. So we already, actually before we determine that these are 45, we see that this is the same as this. They're equal sized. So given BD bisects ABC, it follows that, well, if they bisect, this would really be angle two equals angle three. If they bisect, they're equal. Using substitution, blank or two, measure of angle three, equals 90. Mm. What do you think there? Something equals 90. Yeah, but talking about um, angle one. Yeah, here we actually have a few options. We could put angle one plus really or two um and then we could say two times angle two. At, uh, so, re what they're looking for here, I would accept a lot of things. This is 2 times the measure of angle 3 equals 90. 2 times the measure of angle 3 equals 90 because this is half of a complementary pair. So right here, what they're actually looking for is, I don't know, not highlighter. Let's be an actual pen. 2 times angle 2. They're trying to say that if these together were a 90, and there's a bisector, and both of them are half of 90, doubling either of them is 90. Using blank angle 3 equals 45. Um, I mean, we can use a couple different things. Definition of, or actually they're using division. Like We could say using the division property of equality. So here, I would probably just say the division property of equality. We divide it on both sides. Do you remember, anytime you do something to both sides, what did you do? Property of equality. Addition, property of equality. Subtraction, property of equality. It doesn't matter what we did. We do it to both sides, it's that property of equality. By the congruent complements theorem, well, if two angles, that congruent complements theorem is if two angles are both complementary to the same angle, they themselves are both congruent. So, uh, by the congruence complements theorem, what two angles are congruent to the same angle? Well, that same angle is angle 2, so angle 1 and 3 must be equal. Um, so angle 1 equals, I can't fit it in here, sorry. This, if you were writing a proof like this, and I hate that they never give you enough space, I would have gone through the lines and said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like I would have numbered my blanks and then done it on a separate sheet of paper. So this would be like angle one must equal angle, um, sorry, three, since they're both complementary to the same angle. It follows that blank because your angles have the same measure. So it follows that angle three, so this would be angle three equals 45. 
because we know that they're congruent, we know that they are the same size, so that then follows is that we know that angle three is 45 then because congruent angles have the same measure and because congruent angles have the same measure and the length I said size, I don't know what they're looking for there. Paragraph proofs are normally overly complicated. Two column proofs, what? Two column proofs are really what we mainly use. Sometimes paragraph proofs get a little wordy. It's that last line, I'm not. Same measure and size, same measure and I don't know. Does that kind of help? Yeah. I, I used to write a two column proof and then make it paragraph. Like if I was asked to make a paragraph proof, because I was really bad and I'm still bad at like writing, like just straight up, just like starting and just writing continuously. I can't think like that. I have to structure everything first and then say, okay, here's what I need to write and then write it. Not just start and start going. Because it's very hard to start that and think through the whole process of the paragraph. It's a lot easier to look at and say, I know this, what do I know? Now that I know that, what do I know? Now that I know that, what do I know? Like, and just keep building it that way. And then we can write it out in a paragraph. I have a question, Mr. Hudson. I have an answer, hopefully. So do we need to go back and memorize every single theorem we got here for high school? Absolutely not. What you need to do is understand why the theorems exist and be able to apply okay. that knowledge. You don't have to say, so by theorem 37. You don't or, need to remember the specific you need to know at least enough to say what it is. So I could say that angle 2 and angle 3 both have to be 45 because they're um, complements and because BD is a bisector. Okay. What that re like, there's a theorem to go with that, right? There would be like congruent complements theorem or something like that. But you need to understand why the theorems exist. You don't have to memorize the name of every okay, theorem or anything like that. Yeah. At least, like, at least if I was your high school math teacher. Now, when you get into that class, you can ask them specifically, what do you want us to have memorized? What do you want us to just like have application? You can ask them their specifics, but most teachers aren't going to tell. I mean, there's thousands of theorems out there because a theorem is a generally accepted um, statement of like proof or statement of evidence or something. It's just not a fact because it could potentially be disproven if we discover something else. So a theorem is a generally accepted. All right. Other questions, guys? From 10, 7, or anything? Yeah, if you've turned in the work, you're good. Yeah, so like 13 here, Hannah. Look back at proof in exercise 11. Rewrite that proof as a paragraph proof. That like, so really, I would never advise you to just dive into a paragraph proof. Like, when it's fill in the blank, that's different. But I would never say just write a paragraph proof. I would probably say write a two-column proof and then rephrase it as a paragraph proof. But here, to make this a paragraph proof, we would say, like, we know that angle 5 is congruent to angle 2 because it's given. From there, we can determine that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 because they are alternate, uh, you know, what, like, we just keep saying, I know because of this, and then I know, like, you just keep going back and forth. Hey, Mr. Hudson. Hey, Alex.